I'd like to welcome you to the Division of Digital Teaching and Learning's first installment of a series of webcasts and webinars called Library Media and Technology Tidbits. I appreciate the North Carolina School Library Media and Technology communities responding to my planning surveys for this series. About 50% of survey participants stated that they would most likely attend live webinars, and about half stated that they'd view archive broadcasts. So these will be monthly or bi-monthly and will take the form of both live webinars and pre-recorded webcasts such as this one. One of the topics that received the most interest in the survey was collecting and sharing data. So this first webcast will address connecting your school library media program to student achievement by using SchoolNet data. I'd like to thank you for choosing to use your valuable time to increase your impact on students across the state and their teachers. I hope that at the end of this webcast, you'll feel that it was time well spent. I've created a wiki page to house today's webcasts as well as the resources that I will mention. They are linked on this wiki page. So I encourage you to bookmark this URL for future reference. I want to start by giving you a little background about this webcast's origins. As a school library media coordinator over a period of just a few years, my school lost a school library media coordinator position and then two library media assistant positions, leaving me as the only remaining library media staff serving the needs of my teachers and my students. And as a result of the cuts, I really struggled to answer the questions, what should I be spending my incredibly limited time on? What are the things that will have the biggest impact on my students given that my time is in such high demand? I was also challenged to connect my actions and my library media program offerings to student learning so that the powers that be recognized the necessity of the library media program so that the cuts would stop and library program would be funded. I knew that research showed that library media programs with certified school library media coordinators and appropriate staffing increased student achievement, but how could I demonstrate that locally in my own program? I've noted an observation here from a recent teacher librarian article, which I've also provided a link to on the wiki page, as well as to an NPR article entitled, Librarians are a luxury Chicago public schools cannot afford. You may want to come back to these later, but they really spoke to my experience and reflected my struggle then as a school library media coordinator and now as the Department of Public Instruction's school library media consultant who views school library media programs as necessities for our students, not luxuries. So for the next few minutes, I want to demonstrate how you, as a school library media coordinator in North Carolina, can utilize SchoolNet to collect data connecting your programs to student achievement so that you can use this data to make data-driven decisions about your programs and actions and so that you can then share this data with stakeholders to advocate for your programs. I hope that you'll find this meaningful to your practice. A good place to start when thinking about any topic related to our work is by viewing it through the lens of our professional standards. We should always be mindful of how our actions as school library media coordinators match our standards. We can begin with the essential question, what does collecting and sharing data have to do with my job? If we examine our professional standards and the performance indicators of our evaluation, We'll see a number of references to using data, especially for things like data-driven leadership, data-driven decision-making, data-driven program management. The one we're going to be cognizant of today is that school library media coordinators collect and use relevant data to improve their professional practice and the library media program, which is Standard 5, Element A, at the proficient level. It is clear that using data to inform my practice is a responsibility of being a school library media coordinator. So now the question becomes, what data do I have available to me? Today I'm going to demonstrate the data available in SchoolNet. I'm going to start by just demonstrating some data you can access in SchoolNet using the School Library Media Coordinator roles and permissions recommended by the Department of Public Instruction. Then I'll share with you how you can apply this data to your practice to increase student achievement and connect that achievement to your library media programs. 
Now, as you can see on my screen, I've logged into SchoolNet, and the way a school library media coordinator would access SchoolNet is through their link in PowerSchool. So you'll log into PowerSchool and click on the SchoolNet link to access it. The system will recognize you and you'll have access to components of SchoolNet based on the way your PowerSchool coordinator sets you up in the system. There are specific roles and permissions for various staff members such as leaders, teachers, school library media coordinators, instructional technology facilitators. This demonstration is with the school library media coordinator role and permission that has been recommended by the Department of Public Instruction. At the end of this webcast, I'll show you the roles and permissions document that you may want to share with your PowerSchool coordinator if you learn that your SchoolNet account is not set up as a school library media coordinator. The caveat to that is that some of you are school library media coordinators who have assigned classes, such as electives that you teach, or you have classes because you operate on a fixed schedule where you have numerous assigned classes every day. In this case, you are in SchoolNet with a teacher's role, which also gives you access to your student data. So when you access SchoolNet, you will see a screen similar to this one. When you hover over school and district data, you'll see a dashboard that links you to benchmark tests. That's what I'm going to focus on today. SchoolNet has a lot to offer school library media coordinators, and its features will be comprehensively explored in an April home-based webinar, so stay tuned for that. But for our purposes today, I want to focus on this one feature related to student benchmark data. So I'm going to click on benchmark tests. And you'll see that I'm prompted to choose my institution and school. Your choices will be specific to your district and school, so you won't see exactly what I'm seeing as I'm working in a training site. Once I've selected my school, I'll be able to view available benchmarks. The benchmarks that you see in this demonstration are all bogus. They're filled with fictional information, again, because I'm using a training site. In your live SchoolNet site, you should be able to view your school's benchmarks. So for this demonstration, I'm going to click on this benchmark from June 10th and delve deeper. When I've expanded this benchmark test, I now have access to features such as item analysis, overall performance, standards by school, and standards mastery. And I'm really interested in standards mastery because I think this has great potential to inform our practice as school library media coordinators. So let's drill down into standards mastery. What I get is a report that shows how students in my school performed on particular standards of this benchmark. Now, if you're paying close attention to my screen, you may be wondering why are there math standards on a computer skills benchmark? Remember that what I'm using is a benchmark that's been created by users in this training site, so it's fictitious. What you should see in your live instance of SchoolNet are the standards from the specific benchmark test on which you clicked. As a library media coordinator, my priority is impacting student achievement. So I want to see which of my students or students in my sphere of influence are not achieving so that when the opportunity for target intervention presents itself, I'll be ready to act. Or better yet, I'll be able to create those opportunities based on what I observe here. So I'm going to look at the students in my school who are weak in specific areas where I may be able to intervene with the students or even collaborate with their teachers to increase their learning. When I click on a specific area of the report, I then get a list of the students who scored in that category. I can click then on students in that list to get individual student profiles. One of the pieces of information that can be beneficial to me is the student's academic record. In your SchoolNet instance, you should see a student's grades in the S1, S2 columns. The student profile also shows me the student's weaknesses as far as standards from benchmarks. Now how can we apply this to our practice? I want you to think about the special groups of students that you work with regularly. 
Some of you lead student book clubs, some of you have library lunch bunches, some of you have advisee groups, you lead literacy circles and tutoring groups, some of you work with students through the Battle of the Books. These are students that are in your sphere of influence, many of which you work with on a regular basis. What if I observed via SchoolNet that Johnny, one of the students in my book club, demonstrated on his benchmark test that he's weak in the information and technology essential standard of using technology as a tool? Couldn't I intentionally develop book club activities designed to help Johnny and other book club members strengthen their skill of using technology and other resources for assigned tasks? Such as implementing a project where they create digital book trailers of books the club has read. Or what if I observe through SchoolNet that Sally in my book club has not mastered the English language arts standard of identifying aspects of a text that reveal an author's point of view or purpose? Couldn't I intentionally target this standard in our next book club discussion or choice of text? My students would not even realize I was working through the book club to improve their academic achievement in language arts or information technology. They'd just be having fun with their friends in the club. Then, couldn't I take this a step further by monitoring Sally and Johnny's progress over time so that I can connect that progress to my library media program and my activities and their activities in the school book club? With SchoolNet, I can even create my own assessments so that I could give students in my special groups pre-tests and post-tests to collect data. But that's a teaser, because creating assessments in SchoolNet will have to be a topic for another day. On the wiki, I have linked a webinar that illustrates how to create assessments in SchoolNet that you should watch if you're interested in that idea. So I encourage you to explore your SchoolNet live site and think about ways that you can use the student data accessible there to impact student learning through your library media programs. I'd like to leave you by showing you ways to get quick assistance as you explore and use SchoolNet. So we'll start on the landing page where you'll see a help option in the upper right hand corner. This houses users guides uploaded to the help module area. Each is contextualized to whatever page or area of SchoolNet you're currently visiting. Also, quick reference cards and PowerPoint slide decks have been uploaded into the Instructional Materials area of SchoolNet. When conducting a materials search, filter the subject by home-based training. Currently, 48 resource items exist in this area. Other avenues of assistance are available as well, including contacting your power school coordinator, your library media director or supervisor, your regional digital teaching and learning consultant, or through the Department of Public Instruction's home-based website and archived webinars housed on Vimeo. These are all linked on this broadcast's wiki page. Lastly, on this webcast wiki page, I've also linked to a roles and permissions document that should help guide your power school coordinator to ensure that you're assigned the proper roles and permissions in the system to meet your needs as a school library media coordinator. I hope our first tidbit webcast was meaningful to your practice. I'd like to end by collecting my own data, which I plan to use for data-driven decision making. So I'd love for you to take a couple of minutes and complete the feedback survey that I've linked on the wiki. Again, that URL is on the screen. I look forward to future library media and technology tidbits, webcasts, and webinars. Thanks so much for your time and your efforts to impact North Carolina students and teachers through your library media programs.